Okay, guys. Um, so we've got our rough transfer paths and stuff worked out, um, but we need to work out where objects are at a particular date. And so I am here, which is a huge document with all the maths and code examples and stuff you'd ever want. Uh, and I've just lost where I was. <laughs> right, yes, there we go. And what I'm looking at here is this, which is the, the calculation for the orbital period in years for planets. Uh, and basically, my understanding of how this works is you take uh, the mean anomaly to the power of 1.5 divided by the square root of 1 plus the object's mass in solar masses, uh, which works for us. Oh, it says right there, okay. Which works for us because it's zero for comets and asteroids because they're so small compared to like the sun. Uh, which also means that for spaceships that can be zero, which simplifies a whole lot. So what we end up is with uh, the um, it's not the mean anomaly, is it? Semi-major axis. The semi-major axis to the power of one point five over the square root of 1 gives us the years uh, and then here they're multiplying it by the day constant to get the number of days uh, which we don't necessarily need to do. So that's the plan. Uh, I'm going to try and implement that now and, uh, and when we get we're going to go fast forward and uh, we'll see what goes wrong. Okay, cool, let's do that. sign saying your mic is not on. Um, what I'm doing now is I've noticed that while the progress is positive it works um, and while it's negative it doesn't which makes sense because progress is uh, designed to go between 0 and 1. At the moment it looks like it's going between um, 0 0.5 and minus 0 0.5 as you can see here so it, it instantly jumped from um, uh, it's like periapsis to its apoapsis and then came back round again. So as you can see here, this should get to uh, zero as it reaches the periapsis. You can't see me pointing at the screen, can you? This here. As this gets to zero, it will stop. Boom. And then it will carry on until it reaches minus 0.5 when it gets here and then it will jump back up again. So what I need to do is add 0.5 to the, the value. Now I'm not quite sure why. So answers on a postcard if anyone can figure that one out. Uh, but yeah, what I'll do now is if I quickly jump back into the code. Um, here I'm calculating the progress. Uh, I'm subtracting uh, MathD round uh, from the progress to make sure it's between 0 and 1, which doesn't seem to be working. But if I then add on uh, 0 0.5, that should give us the expected behaviour. Boom. So, okay, now at least it's on the other side of the, it's going from uh, periapsis to apoapsis, which is good. And 
we should see it get to a paroxysm here and it then should carry on round rather than jumping back to zero. So this should get up to one and then wrap back round to zero. <sighs> or rather it should go down to zero and then wrap back up to one. Either's good. So what the other thing this gives us is now that the uh, now this is based on um, the current date. If I press start here, just move the debug window out of the way. This the planet's now um, in that position. If I click outside of Unity, that will stop Unity updating because I've I've not got um, update while off while out of focus turned on. Uh, give that a couple of seconds and if I click back in we should see it jump to a new position which is based on the current date. There we go. So that's good. So now if you exit this, so keep in mind that it was there, and if I start it up again it should be back where it was. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So that now, regardless of when I start this, will have this at the right place which is Probably our first step towards um, like offline gameplay because this is now updating the the map based on the current time rather than the uh, uh, rather than just starting everything at zero every time you boot the game, which is good. If I pop into the code, you can see what we're doing here. Um, where are we? So first, I'm calculating the orbit period. Uh, and we're getting the number of years, which is uh, semi-major access to the power of 1.5 divided by the square root of 1, because we're assuming that this is a ship at the moment and has zero mass relative to the sun. Uh, and then what I'm doing is I am converting that into years uh, by multiplying it by this big number here, and that basically gets us the ticks. Uh, so it basically gets the number of 100 millisecond intervals in one in this number of years, uh, converts it to a long, and then we're dividing it by this number, which is the um, like the the time warp speed. So if I make that an order of magnitude bigger, it, we should see this rotating uh, an order of magnitude faster. Yeah, so you can see that's moving considerably faster now. Okay. So that means in debugging I can set this number high so I can see stuff happening quickly uh, to test things and in um, like you know actual gameplay it can be set low because the the game's real the game speed is going to be probably about I don't know a hundred to a thousand times real time so it does go a little bit faster but you know you don't have to wait six years for your ships to arrive at uh, at uh, like Neptune or whatever. Um, but it's still got like a, a decent amount of time. Yeah, okay. So then what we're doing is we've got our orbit, <coughs> our orbital period, we're calculating that, uh, and I might actually cache this value because it's recalculating that every update frame at the moment, and that's unlikely to change unless SMA has changed. Uh, sorry, unless the semi-major axis has changed, and at the moment there's not really a facility to do that. Um, so we've got our orbit progress, which is a number between 0 and 1, uh, which is used to calculate whereabouts on the path that it's generated for the orbit to put the object. Uh, and what we're doing is we're getting the date time now. Uh, we're getting the time span between now and the epoch, which uh, at the moment I've hard-coded to uh, the 1st of the 1st, 1900. 
Um, for my planets and stuff, I do have an epoch um, value, and that's uh, the epoch is the uh, the most recent uh, periapsis. Uh, in this case, it's not. It's just like the last like a reference time where it was at periapsis. Um, and then subtracting the epoch uh, now from the epoch to get the time span, like the difference between, like you know, now and the epoch. Uh, I'm then getting the progress, which is the total days, which is a double of the time span, and then getting the orbit period, which is also a time span total days, dividing them together, and that will then get us like the fraction of one into the other. Uh, I'm then subtracting math round uh, progress from that, so that I get an int between a uh, zero point. 5 and negative 0 0.5 uh, and then I'm adding 0 0.5 to that so I get one from uh, 0 to 1. Uh, I'm then debug logging that so that you, uh, while I was testing it, in fact I will get that out and then I'm returning the progress. Uh, and that is used in this get world position. Uh, now I need to refactor this because at the moment it was like uh, done so you could put in the progress uh, and now we probably don't need that anymore. Um, it's getting a, a position zero. If you're wondering what this vector 3D thing is, I've re-implemented all of the vector and transform stuff as doubles in a, in, a, in a separate class library so that I can use high precision stuff for the, for the map. Um, I think I did a video on that, I can't remember. Uh, we're then getting T as the orbit progress um, that has now been replaced with a date time value, so I can delete that comment. Uh, that needs to change because this was updating the offset of the orbit path so that it follows its parent around. I don't know why I had it th this transform position, which is silly, because what actually happens is then it shoots off into space <laughs> because it adds its own transform to it every single time. I have no idea why I did that. Uh, and then basically we're, we're getting points along the path by um, if it's less than if it's less than a quarter multiplying it by four to get a number between zero and one and then getting the point getting the points along the first section of the path the orbit paths are split up into four segments which are bezier curves um, and to get the position on the bezier curve uh, I have to, I'm giving it a number between zero and one uh, and then finally we are returning that position as its world position and what you get is boom it moves around and as you can see it started from here rather than up there now because we've got a uh, um, uh, because it's based on the, the current date time so that's awesome okay so that's getting orbit uh, a single orbit working in in like real time as it were. Uh, what I need to work on next is uh, you can see you can see up here I've turned off the ship and if I turn that on that's quite likely to fail uh, or not. So it did generate those orbits it's not updating the ship position which is interesting I'm not sure why. Anyway let me turn that back off. So what we should do is because the because the transfer orbit is also an orbit, albeit an elliptical one, we can work out the period of the orbit and divide it by two, so that we get how long it will take to get from here to here, and we can then use that depending on what we want to do. So if we want to go to a position of say this moon we can then work out where that moon's going to be in the time it will take to change that orbit and then work backwards. Or we can go the other way around, we can work forwards to get to any position on here where we don't particularly care about whereabouts we are on the orbit. So that's probably going to be the next video, I'm going to get this ed edited up and uploaded. I'm trying to do more smaller videos now rather than doing massive videos and like burning out which is I guess the main problem that I had. Um, so yeah, planets, moons, all move in real time. I'll tweak the um, that offset thing so that I can then have stuff orbiting other stuff. Um, 
basically that you, if you have a, the, the moon controller here has an orbit controller um, if you have um, another object childed to that with an orbit controller it should be updating it it should you know be getting its uh, um, it should be moving the center of the orbit relative to to that um, yeah I'm rambling on Okay, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video where we'll hopefully be getting the uh, this uh, transfer orbit to track um, ahead of, say, like the moon or something. Okay, rock on guys, see you in the next video. Bye.